from this beautiful scene here in Brixby Wood, not far away from Alford, these bluebells, and rather than just do a straightforward copy of the bluebell picture, it's rather nice to work out there, I may even manage yet, we'll see how the time goes and the weather's been a bit changeable, but this time I'm going to do another one in the wildlife series, and I'm going to include in it a fox in the background, two badgers in the middle foreground, and a couple of hares watching from the, the, the right hand side. All of these things I've seen around the area here. In fact, when I took this bit of video at the end, there was a hare running through the bluebells then. I went out at four o'clock in the morning with, the, with one of the cameras and uh, did some recordings of the bird sound at dawn. Dawn chorus at the moment is absolutely beautiful around here. And of course the woodland uh, dawn chorus is very different. And that's what I'm playing in the background during the storm here. Right, without much ado then, let's get on. And we're going to start with acrylics, use a little bit of the sponge techniques, then into brushes and build it all up with brushes as it sinks into the dark and then once I finish doing my basic layers I'll finish with the oils to give the last brightness and vibrance of this uh, picture. I'm using MDF here. I've got a piece, uh, I have a very nice frame uh, ready to fit this and I've primed it with some deep blue and a little black acrylic so I've got the smooth side of the board here and used uh, some pastel pencil just to draw the areas on. Then down below and ready to paint with I have my usual stay wet, homemade stay wet palette and a mixing palette plus my brushes and also you'll notice up here um, a couple of sponge rollers that I want to start off with very handy little things getting quite cheap off eBay and then down to my brushes my mixture of filberts and rounds and a couple of sponges as well because I may well need those as well amongst that I've got um, my rake brush and a fan if I need them so everything I'm going to need for that painting here first of all I'm going to mix up this background colour here I want to be painting uh, this area rather a mottled, a nice stripy effect. So we'll start by adding some of our darker background colours. I'll take a, a larger brush and just a dab of water into there. Then I want um, just a small amount of white because even though I'm going to go darker, uh, I need a bit of body colour in this. Now some fresh and blue. I'm going to need to put some more colour out shortly, I can see that. That's going to make it nice and dark. Into that Prussian blue, a little bit of yellow ochre. That'll give me a mid grey. Now we'll just test that colour out on here. Let me come, let me come right down to the fox here. It gives me a rather nice mid grey colour. And I'm going to let some of the dark show through the background here with that, with that colour. So we're not going to use the roller quite yet. Letting the dark show through in places, going right down around the fox, letting the say letting some of the darks glow through here because I want to get these effects of uh, the background light right down there to the to Mr Badger. Mix some more paint up. Crushing blue, a bit of white, a bit of yellow ochre. Give me this 
stumbling it in as I say some dry brush work there I'm going to put the lights in shortly I just want to work in these base colours first and there now I'm going to change my colours I'm going to make up a green now for the sponge rollers and take some of that just wet my roller get it going because it's a brand new roller so this one's wetting a little bit just to get it going and then we'll get some paint into that need plenty of it I take a little bit more add it into that Prussian I want a mid green at the moment here and we'll just start to roll this in a textural way across the surface for all the fun look different directions just giving ourselves the effect of a light background doesn't matter if it comes over Mr Fox a bit because we're going to bring the fox out again later next bit more paint And we'll start to work at some of these yellows in the background. We've got the field going on behind there. We've got these leaves coming down and through behind here. We're going to have some light there in just a moment. Bring that up. What I'm going to do now is mix that paint and mix it a little bit stronger. Take some more yellow into that. There we go more water so plenty on my sponge and now I want to really start working down around Mr Badger here Brock so, so we're going to just cover up basic textures at first here we can twist and swirl with the roller a bit as well Foxy and right up between his legs here and I'm going to make a much lighter colour for the sky going on behind here. So once again we'll take a bit of white, mix it in, fairly, fairly wet this time. A little touch of light blue into there and a wee touch of pink. We'll see why in a moment. So we're getting a slightly pinker mix. So a wee bit of pink and a little bit of blue, there we are, giving us that nice light blue. Perhaps a little bit of that cerulean will be nice in there, that's it, that's a much nicer colour, the blue-grey. Take my small roller again, and let's start to look at the light shining through between the trees behind here. Coming down here, we're going to get a slightly speckled effect. This light coming through, very, very lovely effects we can get with paint like this, which will give us texture as well as atmosphere and light. These slightly straight edges of the trees in between as well. So we can use the roller edge to, to leave some lines here. Just tickling it on with the rollers. Great fun. Then we'll come down to brushwork at the end of this in a moment. Right, that's got our, our sky going in the background there. What want to do is add some yellow to that same colour. Very nice bright yellow. A little touch of blue into that to take it down a fraction into the green. Take a bit of cerulean. There we go. Lovely light green. And again, just we've got the roller through it. Don't need to clean the roller for this one. We'll just start to look at some of the, the lighter colours of the leaves shining through behind here.
Giving these effects of background. Mr. Badger and so on down there. All these little bits of light catching. There are many ways we can do this, but this is obviously you can see a very effective way. Spring light, early morning, shining through here. Now much more yellow. I'm going to do slightly deeper yellow now. I'm going to get down to some chrome yellow. A bit more still. I want a really chrome yellow green. Because I want to start to get the sunlight actually coming through down here now. There we go. These little bits of stronger sunlight coming down through and again. So we should use the brush later to make even finer marks, but at the moment just feeling our way. I better put some darks over there later with my brush and bring that back a little bit, that area, because it's lost the, tr the dark trees there a bit. But that doesn't matter at this stage because I'm going to bring it back later. And here, cuckoo in the background right now. There we go, that's used our roller for the background. Now we can start on the brushwork. It's time to start using a brush now, and uh, I'm going to go to a, a medium velvet here. And look at the sky again, and just mix up a little more of the sky colour. Quite light. We're using a heavy body white here because the acrylics can be so, so thin. I'm going to use a little bit of um, cerulean. Very light and a little bit of that pink again. And we'll just look at the way those lights are coming through the trees here. Especially down around this area where it's, um, we can start to get slightly more straighter, starker lines in places of so the sky coming through. And we know we're playing smooth against rough and warm against cool as we do this. Lighten the whole thing up into here. Lemon yellow, a little bit of that. It's amazing how much colour there is in the sky. Very often we don't realise it. Photographs tend to bleach things out. We are working for photographs here. But, um, you know, you and I, we have the, the opportunity to make things much brighter. So we're going to make the our textural areas stand out even more. Same over here, a little bit more light coming through over here in places. And you can see how we're playing these three areas, warm and cool, rough and smooth, light and dark off. Right, let that dry. Come back and... Uh, some of these darker colours. I'm going to go back to my Prussian blue and uh, mix that with a little bit of burnt umber. That will give me a beautiful dark back here. I can start to paint some of these very, very dark trees. Feel the way that these things overlap each other. Come breaking down through here. I'm going to build all of this up with these acrylics first, using the stronger colour of the oils at the very end. One thing coming into another, and the textures as well. I'm going to add some more cools in a moment into this. But for the moment, let's just keep with this it more. Almost using pr pure Prussian blue at the moment as I come back into these cooler colours in the shadows. Now I'm now using the brush strokes against the uh, sponge texturing which is much finer in the background. It is about the joy of the time of year as well isn't it? All these bursting blossoms coming out and 
freshness of spring, the freshness of this light in the green, which is what's so lovely. Lots and lots of little strokes which will make it look as if we've spent hours and hours and hours, but really it's just special and quick effects, isn't it? Right. Got the background in. Now we need to start looking at this area down the bottom. Down there, um, we'll use a bigger brush. Need our darks, but we've got to start actually drawing in some of these lovely colours. Change brushes to a nice big velvet. This will do. the darker leaves of variations. I'm only making an impression of, again, as I tend to be an impressionist, of this scene. I'm not painting it exactly at the moment. I'm going to start painting it more exactly as I go along. We start loose, we can finish tight. We can't start tight and finish loose very easily. We could have painted some salient points in, I suppose, and then come back. But that's not what we're doing this time. We're just going to work in all of these salient all of these uh, impressions of the leaves in the background. And that's why I gradually strengthen all of these colours so we'll start to get a more three-dimensional effect building it up and building it up this way until I'm happy I've got a basic grounding which I just about have now I'll leave it at that for the moment just to dry off and I want to do a bit of work on my animals I'm going to build animals up next and then uh, go back into the details again basic grounding done. Let's work in on Mr. Foxy and uh, try and get his complete as we can. Let's have a little look at um, painting Fox. We're just painting some of the background colours on it. Again, we we'll see how far we get with the detail. I'm going to move over to a, a small velvet now. And again, we'll build up the background colours over the dark just carefully. Start with a yellow ochre. So may come over this with oils again later. I just want to start to feel the right colours at present. Comes up. You see us there. The one thing with acrylics is because they dry so quickly, it's too but watch yourself on blending. And I, I wasn't able to blend them because it was just so quickly and quick drying before I could actually get this part complete. And round his ear there, down to chops here. Cheeks, jowls, round into his forehead, across there. But at the moment I just want to build up where he is.
we are, we've uh, just about finished the animals, must have wanted to do at the moment anyway, and it's now time to carry on with the background grasses. And then once I've built all of those up, we'll look at doing the oils with the stronger colours and the final details. And of course, uh, you know, the final leaves and then the bluebells. So for the moment, I want to be carrying on, I've got the animals in, I want to be carrying on with all of these um, crisscross grasses. But to do that, I'm going to use my medium filbert again, because I can use it as a, a pointed end as well as a fine. And uh, we'll start mixing up some of these lovely greens again. Greens and blue greens. white in because the thing is it needs body um, we've got to give this this uh, these paints because they're a bit thin we've got to give them some body so I'm going to put a bit of white into that and then we'll start flicking in these colours again it's a bit of work but it's it's worth it because as I say it's it's time consuming but it's not that complicated to do oh, this tangled mass of grasses and stems that are coming up Start adding some yellow green to it now. Just start to build up some of these highlights coming through the background here. Now we add some lemon yellow, a little white to it, because we're starting to bring up these lighter colours that we put in first of all, like this one up here, where I'm going to start really adding, linking these together now. We start to link this texture with the texture that we made with the sponges earlier. We don't just do special effects on their own, we have to work into those special effects to make them part of the work of art rather than just relying on their, on their own. Light against dark, warm against cool, rough against smooth. So here I'm painting around the hare's ears here to bring out these darks of the hare's ears against the light in the background. A bit more of that with the white because we need some much lighter yellow leaves up here. We don't know how much oil we're going to need, we'll see how well these acrylics work first because it may be that we don't need too much of the oils if the acrylics work. Right, now it's time to uh, start using some of the cooler greens to paint in these background effects. We've gone down to a, a, a smaller, more pointy brush now, as you can see. it's still sinking back so in, if, if I want to keep this effect then I stay with these acrylics but if I wanted to go much stronger and more vibrant then I will move to the oils which I think I will do for the flowers whatever but I'm not certain I shall use it on the background because this is working quite well in many ways. And even right through to light blues I'm going to take some cerulean now and some white we're going to go into pinks and all sorts in a moment, we're not just staying with this light green. We've got all sorts of colours to find here. Bearing in mind that the flowers are going to come at the very end, we don't paint them at this stage. Colours in. I'm going to start to um, add the stronger greens 
even in these acrylics, which are rather nice, the warmer greens in places, which would make the cooler seem cooler still. So let's start getting in these lovely bright leaf greens, if you like, sunlight catching them. See if we can get some of these much stronger deep greens going on. And once you put them in, everything else starts to change, of course, because the value has changed, and so we've got to start flicking this colour in all over the place and find out where it is. blue-greens that are going on in the shadows down here as well, very important. And yet I mustn't go too blue because I've still got the blue bells to put in. And even very, very light warm colours, let's just take a bit of white and uh, cadmium orange and just see what that does. White and cadmium orange. Very, very light here. Let's see if we can catch the tops of some of these leaves a little bit lighter. Here. Shines out. Look how that now shines out. Surprising how much colour there is reflecting in leaves. It isn't just greens. These little bits of pink are all going to help the blue as well later in the flowers. Now we need to Get the light blues a little bit more, so I'm going to take some cerulean and white and uh, just put it on these leaves next to these pinks to really bring out the cools a bit more and make the green seem a little greener. I'll just bring these light blues over just a bit more on here. You see the difference that makes, it just makes it sparkle a bit as it shines down from the sky onto here. It's just bringing out the cools that little bit more and they're able then to play against these pinks which are on the leaves and give it that more vibrance. And we're not far off, I think, being able to actually um, start our oils and be doing the very bright colours soon. I just want to go back with my darks a little bit now. I'll just make up a very dark, take my Prussian blue again. a little bit of the brown and something as small as this can make a lot of difference actually and there are some slightly warmer colours amongst it too so I'm going to now make some very light brown into cadmium orange a little bit of cadmium orange in, in fact first of all a little touch of burnt umber a wee bit of white give it some body colour and let's start to just find some of these lovely little bits of orange that are in here amongst the uh, it's just surprising the, these warm colours they are here I have a bit of pink even so we'll take a bit of um, magenta might seem a bit ridiculous to you but um, here we go it's quite surprising what, what warm colours we have in here Hit the cooler greens a bit more in the shadows. I tend to take some ultramarine. To find our dark again that we made with the Prussian blue and the brown. And let's see just how dark we can go. We'll make it a bit warmer. And um, I'll try and bring the stem just down through here. It's a bit darker. Just bit more warmth into it because now I want to bring these grasses up and through here to link in a bit more you see and I can do that by using these darker stems. Finally we have to go back to the tips of these to see if we can get that bit of sunlight that a little bit stronger on them. 
and if this doesn't work well enough then I'm going to go back to my oils and put the stronger colours in with oils later. We're going to move on to the oils now. I'm using the same filbert brushes but a different set. I like to keep them you know, for, for just one use only. Medium. I like to use these nice big uh, tubes of oil paint. In this case I'm using the De La Rowney Georgian. But the Woods and Newtons are nice as well. I only use the student's quality oil so they're fine for me. Um, and I'm going to put out several different blues and a magenta or a rose because I'm only going to now be painting the blues of the uh, bluebells and maybe one or two little bits of highlights after that we'll see how it goes. Ruby red is rather a lovely one. We'll have a little bit of that out just in case I need it for those red background flowers with the magenta. Cerulean blue definitely. don't think I'm going to need turquoise but I will put this a little bit out just in case in a minute and also a little bit of this um, emerald green as well because I might need to just put a few more greens back in at the end you see we can paint the oils over the acrylics but we can't do it the other way around we, can't, we shouldn't paint acrylics over the cobalt blue are definite those lovely colours for painting more nice and thick in a minute. Trowel these on and build these um, bluebells up from darks to lights. Now they're all red. I don't suppose we'll need that, but we'll have it there ready in case. I still want my red. Here we are, process magenta. This is the colour I might need for those red flowers. Look at that. A bit bright, but that's what we're going to need. So I should have enough colours there now to do these bluebells. I just want to find my turquoise just in case I need a little bit more cool I shouldn't do but just in case right I've got some, got some white spirit in the jar here and a cloth to wipe on and I'm talking to myself and the cameras aren't even on oh, so here we go this is the fun bit take a little filbert nylon, long handle, and I want to work on these darker areas and the purple areas in the background. First of all um, we'll look at the, the purple, take a bit of that and add it on my palette, a tiny bit of turps just to get things going. This lovely violet, and that's going to want some white with it to make it into a body colour. I want to paint it nice and thickly and some more white as well. Right, let's see how this colour goes in the background. It's right up round there, yes. It's a lovely violet colour. We've got some going into the colour of the badges already, so it will link. And just using the brush, blade on, edge on, I just want to drop these, drop these in here. And bring those, those reds a bit higher in a minute right through there, make these lighter in just a moment, come right up through behind the fox, Mr Fox, and when we've got the colour on the brush, if it's just gleaming in the background elsewhere, we just need to show it, just link it with the background a bit more, just so that it's not a, a wall of, of the colour. So putting on this light, violet which comes right down as we come down to make the strokes a bit bigger they get closer together as well when, when there's a lot more of the uh, blue bells showing right down to the leaves here so we're doing these mid and lighter tones first behind Mr Badger and the blue bells get quite big so we're going to start making some quite large strokes here nice big chunks of bluebell coming down hanging so bluebells aren't necessarily just blue we've said that about flesh we've said that about grass they aren't just the color that you think just one color you think they are they're going to be several colors right work on down there for a bit. 
and they come in between here between these leaves nice big chunks of paint Let's really build some more up again get some more colour on my brush just a little touch of that's all just a little touch of um, turps just to move it slightly it's not going to dry on my brush so I'm all right there right then we can start to paint these blue bells in just as dabs so I say I remember that story I think I told you before in my films about inventing a new way of painting as in the impressionists were called the impressionists because somebody said they created mere impressions Somebody once said about money, he's just an eye, but what an eye. Well, yes, eye, eye. Um, he was indeed. So the impressionists, and if I'm just daubing, if I'm just making dabs of colour, as an impressionist in a way, um, then I'm actually painting with not only colour, but with light. Because what I'm doing here is actually creating an effect of light and uh, pattern and mood and atmosphere right ready for our first blues now we're going to make it a little bit lighter first let me just go back to that and put some more white to it and just go and a little touch of the red a little touch of the red white again. Let's just come back a few weeks a bit warmer up here. Get up to a bit pinker. A bit more of the red again, magenta. A bit more white, make it lighter. Let's try that again. There we go. Because they're a lot pinker up this up at the top here. effect of light of the morning light shining through here as these animals beautiful colours really look for your colours don't want it to be twee I mean, we're doing a very twee and chocolate boxy theme it doesn't have to come out that way we can make it take that one step further by really looking at the colours and uh, making it a, a painting rather than just an illustration or a calendar or a chocolate box. I want to really enjoy these colours and take them that one stage further. Now we're about to start on the blues. I'm going to go to my cobalt blue first of all. Just use it neat. See how that looks. Fresh. Just touches of colour. What we're doing is putting the right colours in the right shapes, <coughs> relevant one to another. So building these blues, these actually building them up almost three dimensionally with this paint. I don't want a bit bright there. We'll take it back a bit. We can rub it back because it's on the board, so I can just lift it off if I want to use a cloth even. And now we've got to look at the next blue down, which is our ultramarine. I'm going to go straight into that. Let's look at how lovely and dark that can be in here. It's much, much deeper blue, stronger blue. It'll make that cobalt seem much lighter, which is what we're after. Go across to my cerulean blue and just add a little of that cool blue in here and there. Might have to add some white to it yet, we'll just see. But it will help to show some of the warmer colours against the blues. Just 
look at the difference that makes. So three very different blues, my main blues in the palette, Cerulean, Ultramarine and Cobalt. We're down to our final coats and uh, I'm just going down now to Prussian Blue, which is the darkest of my blues, almost the blackest one I've experienced. I just want to pick up in some of the very dark areas of these here, for instance. We'll pick that out with the Prussian, which is much, much darker than the, its counterpart in acrylics, so it's quite very, very useful in fact. Well, there we are then. Got that one finished. I don't want to go into much more detail. We could touch it up and make it more and more realistic if we wanted to, more and more photographic. But it is a painting after all, and uh, I've enjoyed doing it. I think it'll do for this one in the series.